space. And the Vikings have begun jettisoning players to create cap space uh, right around 11 o'clock. They announced, or shortly thereafter, they have cut Andrew Sandejo and Mike Remmers. They started the day with about $4.94 million in cap space available, Judd, and they added another $4.93 million. So just short of $10 million now in cap space available for the Minnesota Vikings to go into free agency. Yes, and keep in mind, too, the one thing that's important here is they're going to need about $3 mil alone just to sign their draft picks. So that has to be reserved as well. So one would think and one would hope and logically conclude that there are more negotiations going on to restructure contracts and and or trade guys. And uh, you would have to think that Everson Griffin is gone for sure. This just doesn't work. He's a $10 million cap hit and they can get out of that for next to nothing. Exactly. As far as dead cap. So, so either he's going to restructure to what's going to be an incredibly team friendly deal for the Vikings or he's gone. I would have to, that one makes sense. Kyle Rudolph, I would have thought the same thing uh, as of yesterday until this morning when I saw Andrew Kramer's story in the Star Tribune, where it appears that Kyle is very confident and his agent even came out and doubled down yesterday and said, there's no discussions going on with me or with Kyle and the team about a restructure, which evidently means that the Vikings are going to uh, keep that contract, which honestly surprises me. It doesn't shock me that they would keep Kyle and it doesn't shock me that they would that they would try and keep him at a team friendly deal, uh, but all appearances are, and I I think the Star Tribune story said that Kyle was the eighth highest paid tight end in the league yeah. in 2018. It would appear he's going to come back on that contract for 2019, which personally I think is a mistake, but that's my own personal. You know what's feeling. amazing to me about that? In in those same quotes, he says he'd be totally open. He says he'd be stupid not to be open to renegotiating with the Vikings to get a little bit more guaranteed money and, and a few years added to his contract and reduced the you know cap what I would tell for him? the Vikings. You know what I would tell him? What? I would just say, Kyle, here's the deal. We gave you a really fair contract. We have no interest in giving you a lot of uh, guaranteed cash for the coming years because you're not exactly a young man now. We've been very fair. Honestly, if you don't like what we're going to offer you, then then you are more than welcome to try and go find work elsewhere, but you're going to come back on our terms. No, but it sounds like he's totally open to it. No, but and, he, and they but he just wants, haven't they haven't talked they haven't approached him. But he's talking about a restructure that could guarantee him more money now in future years and, and at the time of signing because the cap can be played with. Right. So yeah. So but any any sort of but mi- I would say if I was Spielman and Brzezinski and Zimmer, I would say no, Kyle, we're talking about you taking a deal that is completely friendly to us. Yeah, but any sort of restructuring comes with a a certain amount of sure. guaranteed money, more sure. th- more than what you have coming to you. That's mm-hmm. that's the trade off between you and the team. You say, hey, I'll I'll take less money this year, but a couple extra years added to the contract, and maybe another million or two guaranteed. And he, it's here it says he here's the quote right here. I don't want to play anywhere else. The Vikings know that. They know I want to finish my career here. It's funny when I read stuff that I turned down a restructure. You'd have to be out of your mind to turn down a restructure when I have an unguaranteed contract. They're going to guarantee money, lower my cap number, and help the team. If that was ever put on the table, why would I decline it? Why hasn't it been put on the table? I don't understand it. Hmm. I don't get it, and I would – and and I – listen – I would go to him with what I consider to be a very fair deal if I'm the Vikings to me, not to him. But yeah, give him a million dollars. I don't care. But right before the graph that you read in Kramer's story, Star Tribune this morning, it also says um, uh, Kyle said he'd welcome a new contract, adding there is an understanding between the Vikings and his camp about his playing future in Minnesota, which I again slow down and say, what? Why? What are you doing? <laughs> this is a tight. I mean, he's not a bad. Pl- I don't mean to rip the guy. He's not a bad player and a great but guy this is, from all indications. Yeah, but yeah. that's not the point. That's There's a irrelevant. lot of good people. Yeah, this is a this is a cutthroat business in None which you're are sitting in here by trying. The way. No, 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 no. Uh, but we're not trying to win Super Bowls. Right. They are. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this one surprises me because if if you were to ask me going into today what I thought would happen, Sandejo being cut makes perfect sense. Remmers being cut and and the Vikings on the way out though the Vikings owe Remmers an apology they screwed him they signed him as a right tackle he played pretty well there they moved him to guard he became ineffective there that's their fault dumb move but him being cut no surprise Griffin I, I think will be traded and or cut 
But the fourth guy that I would have given you this morning is Kyle and said, there's definitely, I don't think he's going to be gone, but there will definitely be something done with that contract. And if there's not, it's surprising. Okay. So where are the needs now? If, if they, if they go, they've obviously, they've cut Remmers, they've cut Sandejo. We're assuming Griffin is soon to follow. Is that, is that an assumption yeah. that we're going to, a conclusion I we're going to jump to? Think that's perfectly fair. Yes. Okay. So where, where are the needs now as the Vikings enter free agency? And if they cut Griffin, they'll enter free agency with close to $20 million in cap space. Uh, needs remain at O-line obviously. for sure, right. obviously. Uh, if they trade and or cut Griffin, I still think that that you move uh, Daniil Hunter from left end to right end. That's Griffin's old spot, right? You you play Weatherly at left end. You need some depth there, but that's not a huge need. It's not as if Griffin's departure will create a starting role. It won't. So I think that's fair. Safeties? Have you looked at the market of safeties now? Yeah. Ooh, Everybody boy. and their brothers. If I'm Sandejo, I'm thinking, okay, I could end up with the Arizona Cardinals. I could end up may maybe on, on the East Coast or at Wendy's. Like you have no, <laughs> seriously, there's yeah. so many safeties now. You, Sandejo has as good a chance as being recruited hard by Burger King, Wendy's, and McDonald's. <laughs> Seri no, I'm dead serious. Yeah, I, know, I know. I looked at the list of safeties now. Landon Collins, you've got yeah, and, Honey and, Badger. And by the way, for all of the, for all of the people on Collins saying, what are the Giants doing? Huge mistake. I looked into that. Landon Collins, exceptional against the run, very good there against the pass, liability. So that move is not nearly as bad as people think. Uh, and then also, we didn't bring this up. The Vikings placed tenders on two of their restricted free agents, Anthony Harris and Rashad Hill today as well. And Harris, they gave, who's also a safety, who essentially took Sandejo's spot after Sandejo played in five games and suffered that groin injury. They gave Anthony Harris, a second round tender. Good for him, man. Which is really good because that, that means if the two sides do not come to an extension agreement, he's going to make three mil in 2019. So I think the needs today stay where the needs were on Friday. And and to the conversation that we had on this very show last week when I was in Florida, I really believe that if you look at this list of, of pending free agents and guys being cut, the only guy that I would work hard to bring back is Sheldon, who I think is going to be too much. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that there's any other that there's going to be a glaring need created by these moves. See, I on offensive line, we're looking at they need two starters, right? They yeah, need to add two starters on offensive line. Yeah. And I think that with with Richardson likely gone and if we're talking about Everson Griffin being gone, we're going to jump to that conclusion. I think you need to add, whether it's through free agency or through the draft, at least one starter on defensive line. I think you need an interior guy. I mean, sure. you have some yeah. depth and guys that will sure. step up, but if you want impact, which you you do want from 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 your front line, you're going to need to add a starter on on your on your defensive line, and you're losing Anthony Barr at linebacker. I mean, Mike Zimmer is a defensive minded head coach, and he's been very good at what he does, but where the 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 losses on the defensive side of the football are, are starting to add up here when you consider Barr, if we're cutting Griffin if if you're letting Sheldon Richardson walk the the losses on the defensive side of the football are starting to pile up the Barr one though had, had to be assumed right yes because Barr was going to leave so there had to be some sort of plan in place yeah. for that one you think yeah and the Gri the Griffin one doesn't bug me one bit it doesn't bug me. they have other it, options there and if this was the same player pre issues last year then yes but the guy that came back was not the same player. And you've got guys. Hunter has turned into an absolute stud Pro Bowl type of player. Mm -hmm. Move him to right end. He'll be fine. I think the and one. Weatherly's very, very serviceable yes. on the other end. Yeah. And I think the one position to go back to that we've talked about. But I think that they can find a guy here who can be successful. Interior. Interior line. But you still got Joseph. So it's not like you're dying there. If you create a rotation inside by him, I think you're fine. And on the bar topic, I really believe if you look at, at this, the Vikings have a case to be made that Kendricks is a consistent player at linebacker for them next year. But you find an extra safety and you start deploying three safeties at, at times. So this whole thing about linebacker, 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 it's important but it's not going to be as glaring as we potentially think.
When you say go at a safety, are you talking about one of these guys that, that I think you find are at one. the top of the, the free agent not, not market? Necessarily. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm I'm like I'm Addy saying Eric Weddle. I no. I'm saying you Ron go Matthew would be a lot of fun. <laughs> he would be, but <laughs> but Honey but, Badger would be a lot of but, fun, John. But you know what? This is what this is one league when, when we're talking about positions like that, though, where we get so in love with players that we know, and it would be fun. I'm yeah. not saying that it wouldn't be, but we get so we fall so in love with, oh man, that guy. I've seen him play, and he's a stud. And then we overlook the guys that we don't talk right. about that might actually be really good. And this sport is brutal. You age quickly. Yeah. It's not like baseball where you you get a guy after four years and oh boy he's got four great years left or five or ten, and, and so. In Zimmer's defense, I think you can get creative. I think you can develop guys. I think that you can find guys. I really do. The other part of it, too, though, is they have to decide. They have to weigh their options in terms of what what, what do we address in free agency? What do we address in the draft? Because they're freeing up cap space, but it's still it's still not a lot of cap space that they're freeing up. So they have to be really careful in free agency in terms of how much of that money they allocate to one or two guys if they can just maybe find, you know, and plug that hole in the draft maybe. If they make what we would consider to be a splash move, I'll be very surprised.